Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Drinks with Johnny. Today, I'm joined for the first time in a long time by my co-host, which sounds funny to say I'm joined for the first time in a long time by my co-host, Sam the Hawk Hawkins and Brandon Lombardo. We're going to be doing a little recap of the last month uh, while I was out on tour with Avenged Sevenfold, Sullivan King, Poppy. Uh, the last time the three of us got together, we were at Sting's last match. So how are you guys doing today, though? First of all, I feel like I haven't been on one of these like at all this year. Right. So it feels great. It feels great <laughs> to be you. here. <laughs> you really haven't been. Like, that's, oh. that's not an exaggeration. No, it's a, that's, that's the actual truth. And it doesn't <laughs> feel like a month since the last time we've all been together. It feels like two years. Yeah. It really does. And we were just in person yeah. hanging out with each other. Yeah. yeah. Even even more recently for me, I saw I saw Homeboy in Pittsburgh or Newcastle, and then oh, how was that? Yeah. It was, it was fun, well, let's, man. We're gonna get through. I have so many questions. I got I got a text message from Darby saying that uh, there were some games had. You went and saw Brandon. We got a lot to talk about today. There was a lot. It was a full month, and there was a lot of fun stuff going on. A lot of great episodes. A lot of great shows. A lot of great cities. A lot of great shit. But like I said, I'm just glad to be here with you guys. I literally just got home from tour last night we're, uh, as we're recording this on Tuesday. Uh, everybody will hear this next week. But um, yeah, and we'll be, it'll be post WrestleMania. So uh, for all of our wrestling fans, we, we won't be getting too far into wrestling as uh, uh, we have not yet seen WrestleMania at this point while we're recording. So we'll have to come back to any talk about that at a later date. I yep, saw Matt before I saw you. I saw him at Home Depot today. You saw Matt at Home Depot, huh? I did. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> cool story, Sam. Yeah. I see you're back with the thrilling fucking exhilarating yeah. story. Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking bringing all the t tantalizing and it's funny because information. I've met him like a million times, and I always feel like he doesn't know who I am. So I was like, hey, Matt. Sam. <laughs> it's like, I won't let I you guess. That. You meet a lot of people. You just got off the road. Yeah, but I love that. He probably you probably keep doing that, so he's just gonna let let it keep going. He knows exactly who you are, but he's just like, why does he keep reintroducing himself to me? I don't know. Act like you know me, and then I won't. <laughs> he did act. What like is he, he supposed knew me. to I'm do? Fu I'm fucking around. I'm fucking. Around. <laughs> All right, let's get to the fucking recap already, guys. Let's do uh, it. Let's start. Let's just start with uh, what I said at the top of the show. The last time the three of us were together was in Greensboro. At at the uh, the AEW Revolution pay per view, famously of course of Sting's last match ever in the ring. We were there hanging out with a bunch of people. Got to see an amazing show, um, amazing wrestling event. Uh, really cool. Obviously, people know now. Like having uh, Liebad play for the for Sting's last promo, and then him with his kids out. I mean, it was it was a really magical night. The energy in that building was like unmatched to anything I've been to any other wrestling show. It had like a WrestleMania type feel to it, but it was its own thing, you know. It really did, man. What about you, Sham? You don't go to a, you don't go to a lot of these. Uh... The Sham. <laughs> <laughs> really, we were in his we were in his uh, area because he usually hangs out in the locker room, right? Oh, right? That's right. That's, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's the know, inside. You guys got to see where I was. Uh, <laughs> no, dude, I thought it was great. My favorite moment, if I can tell a quick story was uh ddp was backstage yep and uh fun story is johnny's always told me a story about how ddp uh well i'll let you talk do you want to tell that story real quick about when you I've met told him? it enough i want to hear i want to hear you butcher it okay so he <laughs> met ddp apparently ddp at the time was with some lady or something and uh he was supposed to come backstage and meet johnny and, and the rest of the band that he had already met they had already met. He's already butchering the story so bad. See, it's well, so that, I, it, it's all right. We like this. We keep it. Keep it going. So basically, they're just to go. Somehow he got shafted, and he, they, you guys did not connect with him at the show. Correct? It had nothing. He wasn't going to be at the show at all. We met on a award show. The, uh, uh, the, I think it was the Fangoria Awards. Uh, for it's a horror award show, and we played it. Avenged Sevenfold played at this thing. DDP was there. Uh, he was in some movies at the time, mostly horror movies. And, uh, so he was hanging out. We got to meet him there. We, we were chatting it up, having a great time. Me and Matt being the, uh, wrestling fans that we are, we gravitated towards him. We were having a good time. 
he later invited us out to the premiere of his movie that was coming out then at the Romans Chinese Theater called Deadwood. We went and saw that, hung out with him again there, and then some months or weeks went by and he reached out, had a friend of his. He just said it was his girl. I don't know if it was his like a friend, his one you know, his daughter. I don't I I never got to meet her because he asked if uh, we could hook her up for the concert uh, in Long Beach. At the time, I said, yeah, of course. And then we proceeded to film that for our live in the LBC DVD that uh, Vengeful Fold fans are familiar with. Uh, with that filming, everything that went down, the dressing room situation, our nerves, we didn't have a chance to meet this friend of DDP's. So, um, and then I never heard Believe from him again. I thought. <laughs> yeah, totally, you totally butchered the story. Uh, so yeah, so then I never heard from him again. And uh, I assumed that he was upset about something. Um, and I've told this story on the show. I mean, I, I told this story to Eric Bischoff uh, a few years back when I had him on the show because I know that they're uh, still tight, good friends and stuff like that. And I was like, you think he's upset? He's like, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't. And then fast forward to this past uh, month when we, when we saw DDP in the dressing room. Uh, the, you you could fill in that story now too. So we're in my famous locker room that I love being in. <laughs> Your famous <laughs> locker room. <laughs> Singing it's corner. actually a hall. It's a hall in the back where everybody <laughs> yeah. watches. Uh, and this one was a little different because Sting's friends and family and everybody came out for this one. Right. So DDP's walking up and down this hall that we're all hanging out in. And every time he walks by, I see Johnny at the corner of his eye get ready to have a conversation. But every time he walks by, he just walks by and goes to talk to whoever he's talking about. And then after this happening like four times of me being like, dude, just go say, hey, man, long time no see. And you're like, nah, I will. I will. I will. I was so planning then on he it. got really close and I literally saw the hand come up like you're going to shake. And then he kept walking and he just kind of went right back down. <laughs> <laughs> Scoot it over to me. I go. I was just gonna. Dude, I was gonna say hi, but then it was like, yeah. You. I also, um, for the record, for everyone at home, you don't want to be that guy. I, guess. I don't want to yeah. be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Okay, but you have a relationship with him. I am that guy. So yes, you are. when you weren't looking, I looked over and I said, "Oh, there's DDP, and no one's talking to him. He's doing literal DDP yoga in the corner back." <laughs> it's like literally doing a yoga like butterfly with his legs, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is." so perfect and i just went up to him and i said hey hey uh dallas and he goes hey how's it going and i was like hey real quick um uh, you know avenge seven fold the band right and he goes oh of course i go yeah well my buddy johnny he's over there he's he, he's had the pleasure of meeting you he has nothing but wonderful things to say about you and uh you know he wanted to say what's up but you know he he hasn't yet he goes oh well let me go say hi i said okay but before you do can you do me a big favor <laughs> when you when you talk to him, I go, I'm sure this is nothing, but uh, he told me this story about something backstage where he was supposed to meet with you or somebody and, and something got crossed and he feels really bad and, you, and he hopes that you're not upset, but he was unsure. I said, and he goes, oh, no, I'm no, they're great guys. And I said, OK, but can you pretend that you are upset? <laughs> <laughs> And he goes, he goes, no, man, that's mean. I can't do that. And I said, okay, well, whatever. Well, it was nice to meet you. Yeah. It, whenever you get a chance, no, no hurry. And he goes, okay, yeah, yeah, no problem. And literally he must have waited like one minute and he came right behind me when I went up to you. And what is it? He goes, Johnny Christ, Mr. Too Big, Mr. Center. <laughs> and he just <laughs> totally busted your balls. It was And awesome. your face to me, as a guy who knows you, I don't think anyone else would really know, but you could see the wheels turning in your head like, oh, fuck, he really does. He is <laughs> I was thinking of how what I was, was going thought? to apologize again. I was like, oh, <laughs> I know I'm going to be able to smooth this over, but it's going to take me a second to figure this one out for a second, you know? <laughs> but yeah, then he, yeah, you know, then he's looking at me and, 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 you know, we obviously, as you said, he was totally cool with everything. He was, we were laughing about it and uh, we, we reminisced on the time and stuff like that. He's like, oh, dude, I, I don't even remember, uh, you know, why we, why you know, we lost contact or yada, yada, yada. And the cool part to me is like at the end, I was like, oh, we should exchange numbers again. And Sam, of course, being that guy asked, hey, you should come on the podcast. <laughs> that is, no, 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 no. A hundred percent not true. Who said For it? the Did first time it? ever, you had mentioned that you have a podcast. Oh, that's and right. He said, that's right. Let's exchange numbers. 
And then he says, wait a minute, watch this. And he called and it said Johnny Christ. Yeah, he Avenged still had my Holmes. number. Yep. He still had and my And then afterwards, and, you went up to me and you said, dude, you got me. He, you're like, I don't know how you got him to put my phone in number. Yeah, in I, phone thought, number. I thought you would put <laughs> it like, in why would I that was part of it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That'd be weird. I also was a little upset that you didn't film it. I was like, you had him come over and you didn't film it on mm. your phone? I have pictures. I actually I did uh, film it. Uh, it Sam, just, uh, I, you took the worst. Pi- you, you have the worst pictures of it. We didn't need to insert them here. Ah oh, man, I'm making. Yeah, we're, we're gonna. We're gonna. Yeah, you just gave yourself more work there. Buddy. Yeah, I wasn't gonna say it, Brandon, <laughs> but now you got to insert. Oh. <laughs> There's some other good pictures from that weekend. We got to hang out before that too. We, went, we I met you guys at a bowling alley. Mm. I was, uh, mm. you know, that weekend, as everyone knows from uh, the Zach Wild episode. Uh, I'm now off the booze. And uh, yeah, that weekend was a lot of part, a lot of it, you know, uh, kind of the final straw. And uh, I, I, I kind of like to make the joke now. I, I think it might be the first time I'm making the joke, but Sting retired in the in the ring after that weekend, and I retired off of booze after that weekend. So uh, you know, we had <laughs> that in go. common. That's good. I like. <laughs> and this is forever, right? Yeah, this is forever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, forever is awesome. a, a a hard thing to say. I'll be honest, uh, because gotcha. you know, it, it's it. I mean. It is forever, more more than likely, but I'm the kind of person, it's not like I'm going through uh, some steps or anything. I think that's great for people who, who want to do that and everything. But for me, it's it's not about that. And it's not about how much time I take off, anything like that. Just I'm boozing me don't work anymore. I, I tried to, I tried many, many ways. <laughs> I mean, it's been documented here on the show. How many times I've taken uh, months and months off and stuff like that. And honestly, it kind of, now looking back at it, it was just kind of rehearsal for the big dance. But um uh, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, maybe there's maybe there'll be a time in the very far away future that I decide I want to, you know, have a drink here or there for a special occasion. Um, but as of right now, it's it's a, it's a, it's pretty much a, uh, a foreseeable future. To put it. I'm that proud way. of you, man. I think it's yeah. good. And and the fact that it happened the way it did, uh, and I don't know, we could talk about it later or whatever. But like the fact. It was uh, you just deciding that. It wasn't like there was an intervention. It wasn't a big mm-hmm. thing. It was just kind of like you said, you know what? I'm I'm ready. I can't control this. I, I full respect for you. One of my best friends. I just want to see you happy and healthy. And uh, to be honest, as, uh, obviously the things will change, but not that drastically. You've gone sober enough. You know, uh, I just am happy for you, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we don't need yeah. to belabor the subject at this point. You know, it's just... No. Like I said, and like we had, I really like the way that uh, when I asked Zach about it too, he's like, he's like, you know, man, it was just, it was a pretty easy, clear cut decision. I just, you know, you just do it, you know. It yeah, was, you start fisting yourself in the ass more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that when was does my that favorite. Start? I was like, I was like, I was trying to ask you about a serious thing, and you just started talking about fisting your ass. <laughs> I loved, I loved it. that. I loved it. Zach was a great. I mean, we we recorded. I recorded some great episodes while I was out on this tour too, um, and I'm sure we'll get to that. Um, but yeah, Zach was definitely a, a, a great episode. A lot of great feedback from that. Um, really hilarious and an and awesome dude. Can't wait till we uh, cross paths again in person. I'm sure we will very soon, I would imagine, with the uh, festival season around the corner. So, Very cool. Yeah. And then, I, uh, uh, so how was that first you? show back? Uh, the first show back, it was in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. So we had rehearsals a couple days before. Um, and, uh, you know, the first night I got in, we did rehearsal and, uh, you know, I was still, you know, I was still feeling it, you know, I was still feeling the weekend for sure. Um, but you know, once we got out there and did the show, it was a great show. Um, Buffalo has changed a little bit since the last time I was there, like most of the major cities. Um, uh, just seems like everyone's kind of moved out of those major cities and, and on with their lives, uh, in different places. Um, uh, which is good and bad, obviously. Uh, it's bad for the cities, but good for the secondary markets that we just came off of. A lot of, you know, a lot of the chefs in these big cities went out to these uh, ter- uh, secondary markets and, and suburbs and uh, opened up shop, and you could get great restaurants that built up these cities quite a bit. They're not like, you know, 15 years ago, we went into some of these same cities, and you'd be hard-pressed to find something better than a... a a comfort in or a super eight uh, for, for your hotel for the night. And now they've got like full on great. What they do is they take these old buildings and they're turning them into like these really, I guess it's the, the term is gentrifying all these places yeah. and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. 
Buffalo is a cool city, man. I like Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, it was a great, great turnout. It was first, first show of the tour. So, you know, we're, we're still, you know, uh, knocking out some kinks and stuff, you know, uh, getting everything super dialed and, uh, you know, we're playing a lot of new songs on this, on, on this tour or songs that we haven't played in a long time. So uh, it was a it was a fun set, I'll say. Like, but you know, even after the first night in Buffalo, we were all feeling really good about the the choice of, of songs that we put together for this tour. I, I read yeah. somewhere it was the first time you played Roman Sky. Is that true? Yes, it's the first time we played Roman Sky uh, in a concert like that. We played Roman Sky. The only other time we did was for the acoustic Grammy uh, Museum performance that we did uh, several years back. But uh, but this is the first time we're as a band we're playing with the electric guitars and and have a whole show wrapped around it you know. So I gotta look to see what your set list was. You, you ended with Cosmic, right? Yep. Yeah. So did you do did you do all of God too or no? No, we 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 took uh, God off a uh, off on this one. Um, yeah, Brandon got to see it in uh, Pittsburgh. It's fucking rad. Yeah, it was yeah. epic, dude. And I was a little toasty at that point, so it was just like perfect. <laughs> finale yeah you were when i saw you in the backstage afterward i was like ah he got newcastled he was hanging out with his old friends from newcastle at a show (laughs) sean was out there yeah found my way into this um exclusive (coughs) bar where like even passes couldn't get you into you had to have this stupid little yellow paper wristband to get into it i was like wait your laminate that i gave you didn't get (laughs) that's that's bizarre that's what i said i was like are you sure the guy's like i'll tell you what you buy me a shot of booze, I'll get you in there. So, okay, right, no, on. so that guy was just wanting to get free <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, that was, no, no, like, no, no, no. it takes you anywhere. <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't the guy that was guarding the door. It was just some other random guard who said, I can get you in there. I said, all right. Maybe they they might have had a system. Going yeah, they had, they on, had a know? system going. Dude. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. They can't close off anything to the laminate that literally lets you go anywhere in the building. Hey, man. Was it cool? Uh, what, is it anything oh, special? Okay. <laughs> there was just no lines and there was a private bathroom so like that was cool but you know whatever yeah that it was, was a fun that, it was a fun show though that like, was a side hustle for sure dude seeing uh <laughs> sullivan king was fucking rad dude that guy looks what a great show right bro yeah As sean described it he said wow i feel like i'm watching a call of duty commercial live and it's fucking great i said okay <laughs> but, yeah, yeah i mean the screens the 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 uh you know the content that he has on the screens going on the whole time. Yeah. Couple with the fire, the lasers, the lasers, the yeah. Actual performance of him too. Like mm-hmm. he's running around, grabbing the guitar sometimes, reaching out. You know, he's carrying the fire sometimes. You know, it's, 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 it's just entertaining, man. And the songs are good. He's he's bringing in great samples from a lot of people's familiarity, as well as songs from his albums and stuff. Like I, I, I think he's an incredible performer, and one that if uh, people still haven't found out from being on the show or being on the tour really need to keep watch on him. Cause I, you know, we've been hanging out with him for the last month. He's a great dude. Um, and maybe even a better performer and, and someone to fucking watch his stardom start to climb for sure. It was like the yeah, perfect way to start recommend. a show too. Cause you got songs that you do know, even mm-hmm. though they're not his, like mixing in with his insane style. I mean, obviously Brandon saw it, but I've just been watching on Instagram and it looked, did he do a different intro at every one too, or was that only the last? Uh, he mixes right he mixes up the intros, like he said on the show. It, it just depends. Like he'll use like the same one for several shows, and then if he's feeling it, or if they they if there's a special reason for it, they'll 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 mix it up. That's pretty rad. And how was yeah, it? Went, it was good, man. It was, it was yeah. really good. And then uh, yeah, so we started off in Buffalo. I have the. I have the dates in front of me to kind of to kind of remind me because it's been a minute, right? <laughs> uh, there's so many, and like I was going through them, and I was like, "Oh yeah, we were there." What did I do in that city? What did I do in that city? Uh, Scotia Bank was the next. So that, so that was a little weird at the beginning of the tour. We started in Buffalo, we crossed the border to go to go to Scotia Bank in Toronto, and we crossed the border again to come back to Cleveland. And I was like, it was, it was all in the course of like it was like three shows in a row. It was it was it was kind of it was kind of a shit show off the bat but we got through it and then the rest of it was smooth sailing um cleveland was cool toronto was really cool i let we didn't get to spend any time there though because we literally crossed the border in and out for that show the only thing i got to do there was talk to zach wild that's when we recorded that one um and then played the great show great fans in toronto of course love you guys um 
and then uh, into Cleveland. We actually had a great time in Cleveland. Uh, my my father's out there, so I finally got to see his house <laughs> that he's had for like eight years. <laughs> wow! Because I'm a really good son, and I visit him all the time. Um, <laughs> and then uh, we had a day off, so I went. Me and Matt went to a Cleveland Cavaliers game, sat on the court, and uh, awesome. watched them play the Timberwolves. And Ric Flair, uh, like the fourth time I'd saw I saw him in a week, was there promoting his uh, Woo Energy drink. And uh, was doing a whole, cut a whole promo during halftime. And uh, it was, he was right in front of us. I got a little bit of video. So I was just like, he has like his whole crowd of people, like cameras and everything around it. He's just cracking his woo and it spills everywhere. And he's like, woo, and fucking gets the crowd going. And it was just like, dude, that's flair. That's flair. You know, it was, it was pretty special. Have you tried a woo energy drink yet? I haven't tried one yet. He didn't, he didn't offer one to me when I was there, you know? I mean, saw him, we saw him in the hallways back there in the dress room area at, at Revolution, you know? Um, uh, didn't I, get, I saw him in the airport. He was on the same flight with me uh, <laughs> the next morning. Um, I went up I and said say, hello. At Revolution, it was probably one of the best and most exciting moments because I know it stoked you out. You're probably the only guy that was holding a beer backstage. Yeah. I, I went clear, so you couldn't tell it was liquor, but... Rick Flair walks by and he looks at you and he sees the beer and he looks and he just goes, ha ha. <laughs> yeah. He gave me, he gave me the thumbs up and like that. All right, man. I yeah. was like, yeah, that's, that's all I needed right there. <laughs> that's all I needed. <laughs> I'm glad I was still drinking at that time for that moment. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the perfect way to go out, man. It was Hey, that's all I needed. That's all I needed in my drinking career is the, is a thumbs up from Rick Flair. <laughs> Now Cleveland was cool. And we had a great show. I got to, that was another one. I got to, uh, the first one I got to catch, uh, most of Sullivan King's, uh, uh performance. Cause we got a suite up and that was a great arena, uh, how they redid it. I mean, after LeBron won them a, a title years ago, I think that's when they redid it. And it's just the dressing rooms, everything. I couldn't say enough about, about that, that facility really great. And, uh, yeah, we were up at the suite watching, with my dad and my and my stepmom and one of their friends, and uh, like I said on the episode, even my dad was like, "What am I watching right now?" He's like, "Cause he's, he's like DJ." He's like, oh, that, "I don't like that crap." And I was like, "Just watch, old man." And uh, he was like, "I had no idea." He's like, this, "This is like a lot of talent and a lot of stuff going into this." I was like, "Yeah, like he's fucking extremely talented." And he's very passionate he's, and he's got a good head on his shoulders. I mean, smart dude. I mean, you guys saw from the episode, like he's really smart dude and um, really kind and yeah, just gr- very happy to have had him on the, on the shows and the whole tour. Really. It's great. Better by DJ Diesel. Yes. That was the coolest. Yeah. So Did you several, like in that video, man, what was your oh, thought when you saw it? I was, we were in Des Moines. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It wasn't Des Moines. Where the fuck were we? We were, we were outside somewhere. We had a day off. I can't even remember the name of the city because it was some, some it, it, it was off the beaten path anyway. Um, and we'd gone out to dinner. We got back. Uh, we went to this arcade, like 8-bit arcade somewhere. It was, it was awesome. Me, Matt, and Travis and a few other guys uh, were, were out there just playing playing some old school games i played the old x-men game which is literally the oh, yeah. ninja turtles game and the simpsons game just with the different characters the four player yeah 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 there's the, who are you? that who same you arcade that was like all of them i was wolverine of course yes come on okay. you know who you are know you on that. the ninja turtle game brandon and i played that in uh, greensboro who yeah. do you choose on that one mm. i usually go michelangelo Raphael. Raphael, it's too short you gotta do donatello it's Donatello's longer staff. yeah i get it but this is i mean what are we talking about here? It's about you the motion of the ocean, not the length. I get it. Exactly, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Who do you I know, pick? I know, I know, I know how to use a side. You know what I'm March. saying? You pick March. Get the vacuum. She's got the vacuum. She hits further. I have it behind you? me. I play it all the time. Uh, I go oh. Homer. Yeah. I go Homer. Homer. Homer's cool. I always went Bart. Bowling ball. Bart, went so Bart. we could play together. I like, yeah. yeah. I like the double team moves, though. Like, they get on each other's shoulders. Throw oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. I play it too much. Yeah, of course you do. You, did, you told me a long time ago you have it in there so that when you get stressed out, you can just go over, tell everyone to fuck off on the computer and go and go play. So I'm sure that thing's gotten a lot of use. 
don't give my secrets away, dude. <laughs> People I work with watch this show. <laughs> no, nobody watches the show. <laughs> They're like, why are you playing that game in the middle of this meeting, Brandon? You're like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, I can I can really bury him about about his meetings right now. I saw him on his meetings when I when I visited him in Newcastle. <laughs> Johnny was there. He was there for my meetings. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, though. Yeah, we'll it get was. to that. If we're going in order, I guess we got to go back to a couple of things. Let's go. Back. Uh, yeah, get some good cities. Who who'd you miss? What was? Give us some highlights here, man. Yeah, man. I mean, a lot of the highlights. We, I mean, days off were great. We got to some really great restaurants and stuff like on days off, which was nice. Like uh, in Cincinnati, we actually stayed in Kentucky. I didn't realize that 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 border like was right like, there. Yeah, we were in Covington, and then we went to Cincinnati for this really great uh, Italian restaurant, Soda Soto, something like that. It was brilliant uh italian spot um and the hotel in covington kentucky was the covington hotel was awesome um show was great in cincy i got my hair cut there <laughs> did you have a uh, a cincy chili what's a cincy chili no this is like what they're famous for like they take spaghetti and they put chili on top of it and i could be wrong here but i think they put like cinnamon on it or it's like a cinnamony type of chili on mm. spaghetti it's fucking disgusting. No, like no, no, no. Whom? That like, doesn't sound gross. like something it's I gross. would try. Like I'd be, I'd be like, I'd pass. <laughs> I'd fuck with yeah. it. That and Mike's heart lemonade. <laughs> yeah, it's called a skyline. Oh, and skyline a Mike's heart lemonade. That disgusting. sounds like the worst combo of all disgusting. time. And you're not gonna brush your teeth for a week after you eat it. You're fucking. Oh, we all know. We all know. This man's disgusting. <laughs> If you no, don't you know, know he did, he did if you're just now tuning into enough, an episode without that, if you're just now tuning into an episode with just the three of us talking shit. Uh, go back to a couple others, and you'll hear about uh, Sam's hygiene or lack thereof. I, well, my hygiene's fine now. I was. <laughs> I will admit to you, I didn't say at the time because I didn't want you guys to bust my balls. When we met Brit, with Brandon and I met Brit at catering, and mm. I purposely did not open my mouth or let my teeth show it. <laughs> that. See, you already. See, that goes to show. And that it's you good that you guys. You guys bad. got me insecure. <laughs> You should have been insecure about that for a long time before we found out. Well, my kids call them little rat teeth, and uh, they don't have to be. All you have to do is brush your teeth, man. It's, they're br it's I brush them. Brush. I can't help that they're small. I have small they're teeth healthy. too. That's not the yeah. issue. It's a, it's the hygiene is is the issue. I brush my teeth in the shower every day. Now you do because we busted your balls for two years about it. <laughs> do you shower every day though? <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> I gotta go somewhere. You're disgusting. All right, you back to you. Sick. Back to you. Let's let's. Let, okay. Oh, so since he was actually cool, I mentioned the haircut because the barber uh, was telling me a bunch of stories. He used to be. You guys remember the show with uh, Brett Michaels, and he had the security guard around Rock him. Rock of Love. But, yeah. No. And yeah. And and the the, the security guard was a guy named Big John. Yeah. 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 So this guy used to the, like, apparently they were. He was also a bouncer with Big John. At the at the Cincinnati bars, apparently, and he had some stories to tell of like some of the wrestlers that used to come through, some of the WWE wrestlers. Like his sister was like dated. Uh, I can't say who, obviously, it was like pseudo dating. The way he's he's like, oh yeah, he dated her. Like every time he was in town, I was like, oh, it's not dating, dude. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to tell you what that is, but uh, it's not dating. dating. Um, <laughs> That's that. That's uh. He he has a number that he calls every time he's in town, um, but yeah. And then he had some other stories of like you know uh he, he knew the guys in uh, Seven Dust and and some other people would come through some of the bars that he worked at and stuff. So, I mean, the way he was describing it, it sounded like a regular roadhouse situation going on in Cincinnati in the in the early early to mid nineties that he was involved with. So it was it was pretty interesting. I can't dive. I know it's a terror. It feels like a Sam story. Like I bring it up, but I can't actually say enough about it. You know? Yeah. Really cool. Johnny. <laughs> yeah. I really miss these conversations. And he's going to throw, us, shit a, out throw us a fucking bone, dude. Give us a catchphrase or something like, come on. I mean, it was too long ago now. That was early in the tour, man. I don't remember. It was like three weeks ago now. <laughs> I gave you, I gave you what I remembered the most. It was Brett Michaels fucking security Fair. guard and he was friends with him. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> He also made me feel like we, we both felt old together because he's like, yeah, I've seen you guys play before. Uh, I don't know. It was about like four or five years ago. You were out here with uh, with Deftones. And I looked at him. I was like, dude, that was 2012. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, shit. And I went, yeah, me too, bud. <laughs> 
<laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, do you have any? I just want to open it up to questions. Sam said at the beginning he had questions about the tour. Ask me questions. That'll be easier. Be going you know down this fucking is list the other like day, a fucking idiot. I asked John a qu- I, I I asked a question to a guest that he already knew the answer to, and then he's like, "Sam, you act like I don't I don't study here." I'm like, "Dude, it's fucking podcasting. This is how you <laughs> do it." So I don't really have story questions for you. I just yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I don't I'm even sure I get the come. reference. I don't even get the reference that you just said. Oh no, said. no, 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 no! No, what we were talking about before is uh, we were talking about that that festival, but we could talk oh. about it. Oh, the festival that we just announced on uh, Rocklahoma, Danny. No, Winter. not Rocklahoma. So, so basically, we, we were talking about Rockfest in Wisconsin. It has just announced that they've put a moshing area, and I was reading the article, and apparently. Uh, Ronnie Racky basically called them out for being a shitty audience. And the audience says that it's the festival because they won't allow moshing. So they're doing a pilot on one of the off stages that they will have it, but there will be no hardcore dancing or pushing going on. And I'm like, well, what the fuck what? is a mosh pit? Like, first of all, how are you going to stop it from happening regardless? Like, well, how is it not mosh? happening before? I mean, I was looking at the lineup. There are some harder bands. I mean, Fever Three Three Three. I mean, these aren't bands that you just stand around. Jelly Roll, I could see. You're not going to mosh to Jelly Roll, but like, I don't know. You might. Yeah. Hey, why not? There's it's different. Like there's different varying ideas of mosh. But I don't. I mean, I don't even know how to comment on that to be honest. Because I'm like, I, this is uh, I, Wisconsin. I, I'm sure we've played that. I mean, maybe is the one where the is it the one where they have like. The plastic chairs all zip tied together. I think that might be it, and they to to cover the bowl. You know what, dude? I've heard this before, and I think that is that festival. I've I could played be that wrong. Festival. I played that. I played something in Wisconsin that sounds like that before years ago. Um, I don't remember. I mean, I love it when there's a mosh pit going on. Um, Are you okay if there is or isn't, or do you prefer? I, I I prefer whatever the whatever the fucking fans are, want to do out there within you know as long as no one's getting hurt no one's getting seriously hurt everyone's having a good time whatever makes you happy you should be able to do that's I mean you're at a you're at a concert it's be free about it you know that's you you've saved up your money you saved up your time whatever the case may be you're going out to let loose I mean that's that's the, that's the idea of a concert and to be around other like minded people I mean if there's a reason that we that I don't know. Uh, for why they had to stop that i'm sure there has to be there's maybe gotta a be just a, there's got to be something yeah. but maybe it's a little bit of an archaic law at this point who knows um that's why yeah. i'd be like i don't know how and then i'm sure danny thought about it and figured it out this way but it seems a little odd to well it's have not like a playpen where the it's not, danny. Go. It's, not danny. Oh, it's not danny that's doing no. this one Okay, you I, mis- I misunderstood i apologize sorry <laughs> yeah. danny i don't want to put that put put your name on that i know you're doing a great job but, but uh, uh, and I'm sure they are like, too. But it's just odd in the way it was like you could, you can mosh, but none of the. And it's like, well, who's the guy enforcing? Well, that's past the line. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I would just take the warp tour approach. Hang up a sign that says no moshing and let people fucking mosh. They advertise no moshing. It's on them. They can't get sued. Probably. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> you see that? Insane They're doing crap, another warp crap. tour. I thought I saw. Oh no, that was probably an April Fool's joke. Oh. Probably. It, it could got, have been. Dude, I saw it on Instagram. I saw quite a few. Insta- uh, I got April got Fool's yesterday jokes. a lot. Yeah, I didn't realize it was April Fool it, because it came off of Easter. Like you're coming out of Easter and you're just like you have this yeah, holiday man. hangover, and then it's April Fool's Day. I'm not ready for jokes, man. I can't take it. Like what got you? I thought Bobby was having another kid. Oh my god! My wife just asked me about that. We were just leaving dinner with the Hainers. Uh, <laughs> that's why I was a little late to start this one with you guys. We just left dinner and I was <laughs> we were driving home. And she's like, hey is Bobby having a kid? And I just, I just looked at her. I was like, you saw the Instagram post, right? And she said, yeah, is it with that girl? I'm like, no, they broke up a while ago. Um, and, uh, let me ask you a question. What day was that on? She's like, I, I don't know. Yesterday. Uh, what day was yesterday? And then she, it took her a second. She's like, uh, I was like, mm-hmm. nah, you're lucky. You're pretty. Yeah. But, um, Megan, Megan. Now I got to say that to you too, Brandon. I, <laughs> you're lucky dude, you're it was a long day like i'm i had been working <laughs> just got oh in the bed i'm scrolling and i see that i'm like no i show megan she goes it's april fool's day i'm like oh fuck you're right also if the you look size at, the size of the baby like, yeah. like how far it, well, along no, it would that, have there's been. a there's a date on it it says like 1999 <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's even better. I didn't even notice that. So good. Good on you, Bobby. You fucking got us. <laughs> us? Why are you throwing me under the bus? You're got part you. of it. You're a part of it. <laughs> Let's get back to this like mosh pit thing. Like, how do you? So you set up like a playpen for those who want to mosh like off to the side. Like, I no, don't, it's funny I don't... too because it said it was a, they're going to pilot it on an yeah. off stage. So it's almost like you know all those people that you want to mosh to, you can't. But all, these guys who are up and coming, which I actually might be more because a lot of the more up and coming, you know, given that energy and stuff, I get it. But I just mm. it's just such an odd, odd thing. Strange. Yeah, it seems it seems like a it seems like an odd thing. I'm sure there is a reason why they don't let it off the main stage. I'm sure there's some some something that happened or something with the venue. There's got to be a reason. Yeah. And this is just their workaround. Unfortunately, uh, this is the first time hearing it. So I, 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 I reserve the right to change my mind. But as of right now, it sounds super fucking lame. But, you know. Well, did you guys but, see the video of the Limp Biscuit at Lollapalooza? That crowd was bonkers. If you haven't oh, seen it, you should last year? it up, dude. Wait, no, when was this, it? A couple years ago. This year. A couple months ago. Oh. Like a month wow. ago. Uh, I did I saw I saw some posts uh from our friend uh over at Rockfeed. He posts a bunch of stuff. That's how I get my my yeah. uh information these days. Uh through Instagram as so, you know, he's we follow each other and I was checking that out, which we're in talks with him by the way, guys. Um and uh yeah, I, I saw I saw something from Chile that looked pretty insane. I don't I don't know I don't know if I saw the Maybe it's Chile, yeah. Yeah, it's probably that because Lollapalooza is during the summer, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Maybe I think I think Sham. I think Sham just just said yeah, Lollapalooza, just lied, just and it was fucking yeah. totally the the one that we all saw from Chile. Watch, there's probably a fucking like <laughs> South American version that they run early. Oh, that's year. probably what it is. It's probably what it is. I'm almost positive. We're Lollapalooza. giving you the benefit of the doubt, Sam. Don't fuck yeah, it we're up. trying. We're trying. Don't fuck it. No, up. you're backtracking. <laughs> that that. Oh no, I knew it. Uh, let's see. Need dramatic music here. Let's see what yeah. happens. See, see, didn't, didn't, didn't. <laughs> oh, it's in August in Chicago. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm. I got you guys. Did you hear him saying that he yeah, just got, that he had us like under his breath? But now there? you're backtracking. A minute ago, you said that I was right. Let's see. No, we say you're right. We're giving we you the benefit once. of the doubt. I ne- we're giving you the benefit of the doubt. Does not mean you're right. You hear what you want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> My wife says the same thing. Have you been talking to her? <laughs> no, it's just truth, man. <laughs> right, let's go back to the next. What's the next date uh, that you went to? <laughs> I don't know. Where was I? Des Moines was after that. We had a spaghetti chili. Yeah, you had your chili spaghetti. Then what'd you do? Yeah, I went to Des Moines. Uh, right, oh, that corn. was cool. Uh, the show was cool. Uh, Said no one. The- I went to Des Moines. That was cool. <laughs> wow. You just got right. a lot of hate mail from a Des Moines, lot. buddy. Come at me, Des Moines. Yeah. Ooh. They're coming at you, bro. Gonna, hey, you, well, you, you should love it. I guarantee you, that's a giant juggalo town. It has to be. Oh, one hundred percent has to be. That, that's that's it, your yeah. people. You're you're a self loather. You're a self loather, aren't you? <laughs> if you're from Des Moines, <laughs> definitely comment on this video and trash. Yeah. <laughs> I will say it was awesome. Uh, we had uh, the pleasure of having Vended, who we had on our mm. uh, first oh. Discovery Hour earlier. Uh, I got to hang with the boys there, watch their set. They were they were really good. It was really fun. They really commanded the crowd. They did a great job. Uh, uh, of course, got to got to see Griffin and the rest of the guys. Talked to them a little bit before and after the show. Went up on stage while they were doing their sound check and and uh, was just walking around. And you know, uh, I was I think I walked the bleachers that day. So, so I was checking them out while they were doing that whole thing. And then, as I said, I went and watched the show. Uh, crowd was into it, man. They were they were into it. I mean, for you know these young this young band that's up and coming to be in front of a crowd uh an arena uh full of of people and to just kind of own it you know they did a great job i was i was really impressed and uh looking forward to maybe doing it again sometime down the road and you know definitely uh crossing paths a few more times with those guys so that was that was really cool those videos he gives it it was all man oh yeah the whole band that's awesome yeah, they were really going for it, man. It was great. It was great. Everyone seemed to love it. We, like I said, we got to chat in a little bit and had some had some fun with those guys. It was really cool. Nice. Yep, I had something from Des Moines. Uh, Sam again. Don't go. To well, Des now I'm scared. I I forgot that Slipknot's from. Oh, you know what I just realized as I'm looking at it, that wasn't even in Des Moines. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Iowa. They're from Des Moines. We it was the next show. 
in Lincoln, Nebraska that they played. Uh, <laughs> it's in Iowa, right? We get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I I mix it up because they're from Des Moines, and they you know. Anyways. So you're going back to that? There's nothing cool in Des Moines. I'm trying that to was remember in Nebraska. <laughs> I'm trying to remember Des Moines. I went to and I had a day off in Des Moines. I got to a, a nice uh, hot yoga session. <laughs> I was that was nice. I talked to uh, oh, we'll have an episode coming out in the in the next coming weeks with uh, Andrews from uh, In Flames, which I enjoyed. They got a tour coming up here in May nice. um, that we that we uh, U.S. tour, um, and then they got a really cool one in Europe uh, in the fall, I believe it was, with uh, Arch Enemy and Soil Work, I believe it was, which is going to be. I mean, those are three bands we we got to talking about, you know, the quote unquote metalcore scene and uh, what whatever it was the metal scene. I'd, I'd rather say that was coming out of uh, of Sweden. And they were definitely at the forefront of it with uh, albums like Clay Man and coming out and kind of really, you know, one of the first bands that I got into of that style of music. So it was really cool. And then we've, we've toured with them a few times uh, on some festivals and they did some uh, England shows with us and Disturbed back in like 2018, I believe it was. So uh, it was really fun to reconnect and have a great conversation with Anders. So uh, that was Des Moines for me. Oh, and I watched uh, Oppenheimer finally. In Des Moines. Ooh, I, I don't have the time to commit yet, but I hear it's so fucking good. It was really I, good. Yeah. Did you see so, it, Sam? It was fine. I mean, it's okay. It's it's okay what it was. It wasn't. I want to know what your gripe was, though. So, what do you mean okay for what it was? What 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 was it that you were looking for out of that movie that you didn't um, get? Because I had one thing. I don't have a specific gripe. Uh, I mean, Christopher Nolan is, is I love his thinking stuff like inception and things like that. I like that wheelhouse. He, it was a beautiful movie. It was, it was, it did everything it was supposed to do. It's just, it's a movie of a guy who does, I mean, there, I, I know it's the a true story, you know, yeah. that's another, that's another cool part about it. The only thing that I found since you said a whole lot of nothing right there, uh, <laughs> true. <laughs> the other thing I that like I it. found myself and it wasn't even a knock it was just for me watching it uh I I was geeking out about the science behind it and I was like ooh I want you to go a little deeper into the, like the science behind the atomic bomb you know I want to mm-hmm. I want to know in the hydrogen bomb and 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 how that How do I make one? <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was getting at. It's like how do I do this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I thought the I thought the movie was awesome though. No, you know, knowing that based on true story, getting a little bit of that information from it, and uh, the acting, of course, was I thought was fucking phenomenal. Great casting, great acting, great cinematography. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, that was that was my two cents. And what about Roadhouse? Did you see that? I haven't seen it yet. Uh, great. I was gonna go watch it uh, just the other night, and I have a gripe with Amazon actually because of that. Ooh. Yeah, so. I have always hit on this computer, keep me signed in. And it's on like one of my bookmarks. And every time I go to watch something on Amazon Prime, when I'm out on the road from my computer, it asks me for that two-way verification code, Uh, which wouldn't be a problem unless the verification wasn't shared with my wife. So it sends a text message to my wife who's at home in California going to sleep and I'm trying to get the verification code to watch something on Prime. I also wanted to watch Ricky Sandesky or whatever it's called oh, from so good. the John Cena one. Bro, Sneaky. that's a good one. That's a good one. I was going to watch both of them both times. Wife's already asleep. I can't get the authentication code. I was like, this is bullshit. Because I've also, because like I said, I've also clicked the little button. Keep me signed in. It does nothing. It does nothing. And I have the password. It's ridiculous. I have Stupid. a great. Stupid. Ricky's so I missed both those movies. Ricky's I, I, I'm going to watch it now that I'm home. It. Yeah. I don't think you have because you've been out, and I'm sure you're waiting for Lacey, but Ghostbusters. Cool. Uh, no, uh, I haven't seen it, and no, I'm not waiting for her. She wasn't waiting for me. They, him, her and Frankie already went and saw it while I was out. And I, was like, I was like, what the fuck? Did you see it, Sam? I loved it. Would it be, is it like kid-friendly for like a three-year-old who just likes ghosts? You know what's funny is I can't remember specifically, but I at one point with the ghosts, 
not that they do anything, but like look wise, I was like, oh, these these are a little scarier ghosts than usual on Ghostbusters. And I'll and I'll be honest. I really liked it. I think it's because I had really low expectations with the snow part of it. Like they make it so like snow heavy and the, mm-hmm. you know, pitcher and stuff. I don't think that was, it wasn't like they're living in the snow. Like I, I thought it was going to be, that's just a small part of it. But when I asked my wife and my kids, I was like, wasn't that great? They're like, Oh, it was, it was fine. I was like, Oh, I guess. So, I so we I, just got the spectrum. What... We got the spectrum, spectrum of uh, Sam's likes and dislikes. Oppenheimer. Eh. Ghostbusters. <laughs> Real science. They don't live in the snow. They don't live in the snow. <laughs> Ghosts don't. Yeah. They don't like cold. Come on, guys. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I what, love what busting balls. I miss this, guys. This is this is good. I this is too. some good chats. Yes. Cheers, 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 cheers. Cheers. Cheers, you guys. Um, yeah. I caught I saw the holdovers. Me and Brooks watched that. That was awesome. Hold on the bus. Remind me which one that is. That's uh Paul Giovanni. Uh, it, oh, I liked that. That was good. That was good. It was it was more wholesome than I expected it to be. Like kind of the storyline and towards the end. I won't I won't ruin it for anyone who hasn't seen it. But like, yeah, I mean it's it's a dramedy for sure. But like it was, it was pretty wholesome, man. I I I, I very much enjoyed it. You no, know, it wasn't wholesome though. And Sam, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, our our lovely assistant Sarah. Um, is is a horror buff, and she knows that I like horror movies too. So she's always recommending me these horror movies. Finally, she's like, "I just want you to watch this one. I don't want to say much about it. I just want you to watch it so we could talk about it." And I said, "Okay." So I, I convinced Brooks one night on our bus, and I was like, "All right, we got to watch this movie." Sarah recommended me. I have no idea what it's about or why. Like she wants me to watch it so bad. Movie called Tusk. Have either of you seen this? <laughs> Yeah, I know what it does. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you guys already knew it. So it's I also, a, the way she said it, I had no no idea when it came out, how long it had been out. You'd never heard of movie. it before? Never heard of it. And I should have because it was Kevin Smith, right? And I was like, and then the premise, I read the premise before I bought it on, on Apple. And I was like, it's like, okay. like I was like, oh, podcaster. That's going to, you know, Kevin Smith is going to have some cheekiness to it. And, you know, it'd be some kind of fun horror movie. And <laughs> dude, that movie is fucked. <laughs> It's it gets so, dark, I, dude. It's it's yeah. dark, but like I still walked away. Like Brooks was definitely a little bit more mortified from it than I was. I was I was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what I just watched, but I loved it, and I think it was hilarious. Like I thought that movie, everything about it was funny to me. Like not, like it wasn't like the 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 visuals were more disturbing than the actual story. Of course, like the visuals, yes. I was like, okay, that's fucked up. But like, <laughs> and Justin Long is great in it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, he commits. I love yeah. anyone who commits oh. to stuff like that. That's great. It was so, and I was, I was, I was actually very disappointed in myself that I hadn't seen that movie. It was from 2014, yeah. and I just ten years later, I finally, finally watch it. The and suit I, went up for auction like, like a couple years ago, and how I, much I did it go to, for? I wanted to buy it. I don't know. I it was at a point in time when I was just like, I had like ten dollars, so I couldn't buy it. No. <laughs> But I wanted it, dude. I wanted that. Suit. A couple of years ago, you had more than that. You just had a, a gambling few, I said problem. a few years ago. I said a few years ago. Yeah, you had money. You just had a gambling problem. No, I lived in California, Johnny, and I went to Mastro's every day. That's what, that's what my problem was. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> well, Kevin Smith, I want him to do more horror. Like, he did Red State. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, it's basically about, mm-hmm. like, some, like, Midwest, uh, like, almost cult church that basically it's almost like i don't know kevin smith meets uh rob zombie where it's oh. it's like, like crazy guys but then i well, heard that there's another yeah. horror movie he made that hasn't come out yet and chris jericho's in it i saw a tease oh. of it and then i don't know where that's at i'd be so curious hmm. interesting that would be I, i'd be i'd be very interested in that as well but yeah that was a great movie i'm gl- thanks again sarah for that recommendation it weirded me out in the perfect way uh, anyone who yeah. hasn't seen it, go watch it. <laughs> yeah, and if you have, one. you know exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's I a mean, good one. I don't know if I'll look at mackerel the same again after that movie, but <laughs> I would have uh, never guessed. You got to watch the, the one that I, that I sent you, bro. You get, you guys got to watch Sperm World. Oh yeah, you oh. sent you sent that. Uh, that's on Hulu, right? I haven't watched yeah. it yet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's weird, man. It just made me. It made me hate every person in. It. I guess not hate. Hate's a very strong word, but it really turned me on to the concept that like there are independent sperm donors that just 
meet up online in Facebook groups and go and jerk off in parking lots and sell their sperm in like Wait, turkey basters. That's yeah. what it's about? This is a real thing that people do what? and get pregnant and have children and like I did it and I got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't even make money from it. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is like there's a real world of independent sperm donors outside of sperm banks that are doing this on their own. There's a and there's, there's one, a black market for sperm donors. It's not even a black market, bro. It's on Facebook. Well, I mean, that's, it's, yeah, but I mean, it's not in a bank, so it's kind of like it's not sanctioned. Like that's fucking weird. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it's very weird. There's this guy. He has like 120 kids, and he doesn't have a. He doesn't live anywhere. He travels because he tries to be in their lives. So he just but, travels but, to different families and and spends the night. It's fucking why wild. do that's people so want weird. his sperm? Is he rich? Is he good no, looking? That's a good question. That's a There's good question. There's no way he's rich. He's got 120 no. kids. Yeah, he's not rich. He's not rich. <laughs> And he's jerking off in a parking lot. He's not rich, dude. <laughs> Bro, there's just this scene because it's shot very cinematically and it's, it's done really well. So I'm like drawn in by that. But when you get to the actual like meat and potatoes of what it is, I'm just like, oh, this is fucked. But there's this guy, he does it for a living and his girlfriend or wife is trying to get pregnant and trying to have a kid and they can't do it. Meanwhile, this dude's just beating off and like getting all these other chicks pregnant but there's this scene where she's talking about how it's not a problem i don't mind it and they cut to this shot where it's this dude pulling up to a parking lot they're sitting next to each other and you see him in the focus and then he just starts leaning back like this and you just hear a porno going and dudes beating off and they cut off to this establishing shot and you just see him walking up to another car in the parking lot and handing off the fucking jizz it, it's fucking insane dude so what do fucking they do insane. they take it and then they take a turkey baster and they do it at home there's no doctor at all involved you have in like this? 15 minutes to to get it in you and then they recommend that you put your feet up why would anyone go to so this guy? Like, literally ask a friend or go to dude, the bank man i mean why, why so are they going to the bank many, is it because it costs too much money probably because they, they said cost but like they're still paying like I, it's just that's it blew my mind dude it absolutely blew my mind but also gave me a lot of hope that if I get fired because of what you said on this podcast earlier. I can go out and just jerk <laughs> off in turkey basters. <laughs> uh, you think you think you think there's yeah, enough that, demand? You think there's enough demand for your sperm? You think that highly of yourself there, buddy? Maybe. I mean it's it's new guys. Go watch go watch the documentary and then come back to me. <laughs> you're you're so you're saying graded on the curve. You think you do all right. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. And filthy. 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 Sorry, I know we're not trying to be filthy anymore. But no, no, filthy. no, no. I, I, I am. Sam's the one who's not who's trying not to be filthy anymore. <laughs> well, anything I say change. gets turned on something I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's your lot in this. That, that's your role right. in this conversation. <laughs> you play it well, man. You're the only one who can play that role. <laughs> Moving on to the tour, I got to go to uh, Indianapolis. <laughs> Which was really cool. Uh, they just did the, which is cool for me. And I got to tell my son, we were watching, the, before I left, we were watching the uh, NBA All-Stars, which was in Indianapolis at the same arena. And uh, I've been to Indianapolis plenty of times before, but I didn't remember this arena being so nice. It had a great dressing room, everything like that. It was. I walked around, they had all this stuff up still from the NBA All-Stars and like pictures and That's shit, cool. which is really cool. Um but yeah, yeah, and then they it was one of the one of the rare times, not every arena has this, where they have a live feed of what's going on in the stage in the dressing room. So while I'm actually warming up, I'm able to watch Sullivan King and our uh, our main support actor, which was Poppy, who had I'd seen I I'd been able to catch a good amount of her show, but it's right before where I'm getting ready and warming up, so I hadn't been able to watch the entirety of the show up until that point. And uh yeah, so I got to watch it from the screen and stuff while I was warming up and man. I, I, I obviously was a fan of her music before she came out, but the show that, that she puts on too was really cool. Um, you know, it's, it's different. Uh, I, I, we said it on stage that it's, and we said it behind closed doors too. Like this tour was just like the way that we put it together. We're so proud of uh, the bands that were on the tour with us and had the, had the for the foresight for it because it was more of an experience than a, than a concert. You know what I mean? You have like such different acts going on ourselves included and these new these newer acts that maybe our fans weren't super familiar with but you walk away from the entire show 
getting something more than just a rock concert. It's just, you get like this really cool experience and, uh, and she played it perfectly with everything, you know? Um, so hats off to Poppy on that one and the Indianapolis arena. I can't wait to go back to that one. Cause it was really cool. So how do you judge a good dressing group? What, what makes it like stand out for you? Uh, cleanliness, hygiene, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the newer ones, you know, they, they, like I said, they have like a live feed, uh, of stuff, you know, um, good amenities, uh, uh, a good common area. Good common area is nice. There was a nice, uh, area. Is there always them. restrooms in them or do you usually have to go out to go to the restroom? Yeah, there's always restrooms in them. Yeah. There's restrooms all over. I mean, there, some of them are nicer than other ones though. That's another thing. Like you get showers back there. Sometimes you're, you're in a, uh, uh, older arena where the only showers are what we call man showers. You know, the old locker room showers are just all open and you got to push the button, wait for it to get hot, push it again. And like, it's like timed and stuff. And the floor doesn't look great. So you, you definitely are wearing, uh, your, your, your sandals in there. So uh, Greensboro Coliseum. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> At least that one's historic though, man. It's that is Sting, historic. That's Sting uh, and Rick and Rick Flair's arena as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just usually the dated ones are, are kind of a little dirtier, not very accommodating, colder. You're just kind of looking at brick and mortar back there, walls and stuff. It just, it's just kind of depressing, <laughs> to be is honest. It, the older arena is like sonically. How, how does that affect your performance? Do they, does it sound like shittier or? No, I wouldn't. It, it depends. I mean, I'm yeah. sure some of them are, are a little bit uh, nicer than others sonically, of course. But you're bringing in sound at, at, at these arenas, too. You're yeah. you're, you're bringing it like the the speakers, for lack of a better, the front of the house and everything. You're kind of, you're bringing in and it's getting hung that day. So that doesn't the I mean, the acoustics always change. You know, yeah. there's certain days where, you know, I'll talk to Bob and he's like, ah, I just didn't like this room. You know, so I, I made it work. You know, question. I had to chase some stuff. You bring so the speakers you guys travel with. It's not just no, the rigging? not no, um, no. Those are they. They come from the house most of the time, I believe. Um, man, it's been so long since I've like micromanaged that part of the tour, to be honest. But uh, yeah, we we bring in crews and stuff. I don't know. I, we don't have the same speakers and everything. I don't think. But uh, but I mean they're not like built in to the arena or anything like that. Like they're hung and stuff like that was my, was my point. So, gotcha. um, and they usually find the, the mo most optimal spot for the stage to be for those kind of things. Um, but yeah, I mean, acoustically there's there, that's how it's always going to be. Certain rooms are going to be better than others acoustically. And, um, that goes back to the original builds. Yeah. So it does affect it, but, that's why you have a sound guy like Bob, you know, it's a, that's, he's great at it. And that's his job is to manipulate the room to the best of his ability to get it to where we want it to sound and where it sounds great. Fuck yeah, Bob. Fuck yeah, Bob. Uh, let's go back. We're getting, we're getting further down this one now. Um, yeah. Then, then after that, that was actually before I came and saw you, I guess. State college PA. No, no, we didn't state college. I wasn't, that wasn't uh Pittsburgh yet. No, you're yeah. in the middle of the state. That's Penn State. Penn State, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember much about that show. I know it was a good show. I don't have anything out of the ordinary to, to discuss on that one, though. Apologize. Great show. Who'd though. you go Great with, show. Brandon? Uh, Megan, and then my buddy Kevin, who actually like introduced me to Avenged Sevenfold in high school years ago. So like, ah, oh, oh, dude, cool. you got to come. And then Sean Yane, his wife came out, and Anna came out. It was it was, it was all mm -hmm. the Newcastle peeps, yeah. That's and cool. uh, our friend Kelly Pavlik came out. Kelly Pavlik was there. Yeah. Had a nice uh, with chat his with his son. Him. And, yeah. yeah. And uh, Habaku was mm -hmm. there as well with some uh, some other uh, football players. I met uh, the long snapper for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cal. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, he was cool. Uh, he I was, was trying really to sell cool. those, I was selling all those guys on my million dollar idea. Oh, my um, God. That was your idea? It sounded like a Sean idea, but it was your idea. Yeah. Tell everyone that tell tell Sam the idea. Let's 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 get the comments going. See if anyone wants to invest. I don't want to give away my idea and have someone do it, dude. Dude, no one's gonna do this idea. What the fuck are you talking about? They're doing it in Europe. They do it in other countries. It's a very profitable thing. It's not a profit. We're gonna monetize the public restroom. 
Are you oh, telling I thought me... you were going to start jerking off in cars. And that, <laughs> this is the year new. You know Brandon's got so many side hustles. Let's be real. That's, that's the failsafe. No, dude, you monetize the public restroom because it's going to be a guarantee that it's clean. And if you offer tap to pay, bro, I'm going to tap to pay 50 cents to get into a bathroom stall that I know is clean. And then once you're inside, you could offer upgrades. You could have wipes. You could have a bidet feature. You could have all these things inside. You want to play music? Cool. Tap to pay. Come on. There's, you know, you would do it. You no. know, you would do it. And here's the See, other thing. If it's a tap, it's a, it's a, it's a tap to pay. And there's so many flaws in this. Cause if it's a tap to pay, how are you going to ensure that it's clean? How often are you sending someone to clean? There's a lot of, we got crews. Uh, dude. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a lot logistics. of upkeep on this. You're only yeah. charging 50 cents to get in there. How many, how many people use a public restroom on average? Yeah, I got a question. Or you do porta potties and you think about, okay, now uh, a job site or like a music festival and I like the overturn. Like you say, all right, maybe average two people a minute are using this restroom. What's that equal out to? It's like, I don't, don't want to do the math. <laughs> Someone do the math and tell me how much a day. It's probably a few grand a day times however many porta potties. Like okay, first, first poop of the day, first use of the day, Shania goes there, shoots shit all over the wall. Yeah. But guess what? Now we know. Now we know, and we can go back and track it because you have tapped to pay, and we know. So now you get out card. them. So now you get out them. You can't out them, media. but we can charge them. We can charge them a cleaning. Charge them what? It's an accident. Uh, There's. Uh, I it's not an accident. That's fine. It, it's not an accident if you shit all over a bathroom. <laughs> it's not an accident. Have I'm just you done saying. That? I'm just saying. Well, public sh- restrooms get sh- shitty for a reason. They do. Unless, because unless no you're one's having there. someone there like making sure they're cleaning it regularly you ain't, you ain't yeah is this right next to another one yeah, yeah. where they but have choices i don't i don't think it would get sh- yeah it, 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 you have choices but i don't think it would get shitty if you knew it was being tracked and you were be it, you would be responsible you, it's like so but you then could, you're, you're also saying that you're basically signing a contract by 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 using this restroom yeah. I, I just don't think I don't think as many people would. It's like I don't think it's a bad idea. That. You can throw up in a taxi and then you can get out of the taxi one. and you can run. If you throw up in an Uber, <laughs> you're gonna get charged a cleaning fee. Yeah. All right. I mean, I hope you do it. I hope I hope you prove me wrong. I I really do. I genuinely do. I'm it seems like a lot of work. It seems right like now, a lot of work to me. If you want to invest, definitely email Sam at drinkswithjohnny.com. He'll send the <laughs> message to me. I'm not gonna put my email address out there. And if you're from Des Moines, you could use that same email address. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brandon, my 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 Shark Tank, I will invest. I I I will invest with uh with an asterisk where there there is a lot more questions of like I think about like I love that you're investing without asking. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 going to invest without the answers to his questions. (laughs) The answers are whatever they do for normal bathrooms that applies, but we're just monetizing it. Yeah. Go for Something it, guys. Like, Go for looks it. Looks like a, a lawsuit waiting to happen to me. Yeah, that's this is there's a there's a reason why they're not doing that in the states. Um, let's move on because I do want to get to the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. Uh, is a really really nice casino um, and arena. Really cool arena because it does feel more like a theater. Like the way that it, that it feels smaller. I mean, it's still a full on arena, but the way that they have it built up, you're you're definitely closer to the audience, uh, which I really enjoyed. And we, uh, it was the first time we implemented this really cool AI technology, excuse me, on this tour, where we're filming, you know, the cameras, we call them iMag, uh, the cameras that are on us on the stage, and sometimes go to the crowd, and you see us up on the screens while we're playing live on the stage, you know, for the people in the back and everything like that, so they could see us a little bit clear, more clearly. Um there's an AI technology that we've implemented on it where it shifts. Um, you put in keywords and stuff and like a filter, but it's it's through keywords and it changes everything. Brandon got to see a little bit of this. Did, did we have it in Pittsburgh or no? I think you did because uh, Megan was actually like calling that out. She's like, that's that's really cool. What is that? So yeah, I, I so it's, 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 it's live. So it's 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 yeah. a live AI filtering, basically. Um, you it's the first time to my knowledge it's ever been done. Um, and, uh, it looks amazing. So they put in keywords like, I don't know, for instance, when we're doing shepherd of fire, talking about the devil, we put in devil and like, it'll go to Matt and 
he'll shape shift basically into like this devil thing and back and forth and stuff like that. Oh. And like a bunch of different versions of it. It's not just yeah. here's one filter of the devil and it's Matt with some stupid fucking horns. It's like, it literally molds everything around it. It's very, it's, very it's cool. Badass. It's badass. And, uh, it's like a live. We use it for the video. first time. Cool. It's live. So it's, it's, it's doing, it's computing it and everything live. That's why you have to use the AI technology for it. Awesome. Um, and after Mohegan Sun, I think the com- that that machine crashed, and we had to get a new one out. So there was a few shows that we didn't have it, um, and, uh, right after. But and then we dialed it in so that it wasn't like we were testing it out in Mohegan. It was a little overboard, but then like by the the, the next few times, it was being used perfectly. You know, you go out to the crowd, and you see you, the crowd's like looking up at these screens, and they're seeing themselves like they normally would at a concert, like singing along, going like, "Yeah, awesome, awesome." They see that they're on the screen, so they look at the camera and then the screen changes and we put in zombie and the whole crowd looks like a bunch of zombies going crazy. Oh, it's yeah. fucking sick. It's, it's, it's what like, what song really did you do it on shit. or did you do it on multiple? I did multiple times throughout the show. Um, that's dope. It, it's really, I was watching and I was like, this is, this is really cool stuff. So that was very fond of that show because it was the first, again, I was out walking around, uh, during, you know, line check when everyone was doing their thing on the stages and, uh, on the stage rather. And I got to see it before it even went up on the show. And I was like, this is going to blow some people's fucking minds. And uh, including myself. So, love Mohegan Sun. Thanks for that one. Yup. You guys are fucking full of questions, aren't you? Uh, it's like midnight <laughs> for me, dude. <laughs> um, when we got to Boston, Boston was cool. Uh, another great dinner there. Uh, oh, I had a great day off in Boston. Me and Zach went up to Salem mm-hmm. and uh, and visited there. It was my first time in Salem. Very cool little town. You know, obviously the witchcraft stuff, very uh, Nietzsche there. And, and of course, the Blackcraft cult uh, store is there. It's been there for two years. And Bobby Shabinsky himself has never been. So I've been there before. He has. <laughs> Did you hit up Spencer, awesome. ask him any spots? Isn't he from that neck of the woods? Yeah, I should have, but I didn't. That's <laughs> should have talked to you before that. No, uh, you know, uh, our tour manager had been there a few times and it's, it's not huge, you know, where the area is that you want to go check out all the witchy stuff. Um, but yeah, How the witchy Black is Rab- it? I mean, yeah, it, they have tours and everything. We, we went to go do one of the tours and they said it had to be guided and the next guide wasn't going to be there for 20 minutes. So we left. So yeah, I'm not going to wait 20 minutes for it. We just thought we could walk through. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's like the oldest house in history or something like that. That's like still there in the middle of the town. Um, graveyards. Um, yeah. I mean, it's very, very horror esque. I mean, every, every shop has something to do with horror, witches and cats and all that black magic stuff. And it's pretty cool. Um, I want to get back to the black crack, black craft cult, uh, shop there though. Cause, uh, it was really cool. It was an old bank that they, that they revamped. Um, really cool spot. And then next to it or attached to it, they also have like a maze, uh, a horror maze that they have running. Um, and we got to walk through that. It was, re- <laughs> it was really fun. Um, and, uh, yeah. And they had, uh, another shout out to the Hardys. They had Gothic baby merch in there. So I, I oh, shot really? a text nice. over to Matt and Rebby and I was like, Hey, and they're, That's cool. they're like, Oh, we're, we're going there next month or something like that. I think Rebby said she was going to go visit there pretty soon. So uh, shout out to them too. They had the Gothic Baby book, um, a lot of cool stuff in there. So and they had a, uh, they just opened up a, a cafe in the back as well. So oh, they wow. had some really some really dark beans for the, for their coffee, I guess. You know, um, it was cool. Show in Boston was good. Always love going to Boston. Yep, that was the story there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> such a good are recap. They, are they more violent fans there? I feel like. Or are they more like just stand there and any different with Boston? I feel like Boston. No, I mean, I know that they have that rap for sporting events, but I don't, I never, I mean, in the clubs, yes. When we used to play in the clubs and stuff, yes, definitely a much, much rowdier crowd, more, more violent. Um, but I mean, at this level, uh, doing the arenas and stuff, it was, I, it wasn't anything that stood out to me as more, more or less. It was, it's a good rock crowd. There's a good crowd. I know he even saying the rock crowd. There's a good crowd. 
Um, we got to Columbus. Oh, we got to Pittsburgh after that. That's where I saw you. Manchester yeah. and, and then Pittsburgh. So I got to see my godson, Owen. That was awesome. He had a blast, dude. My mom just sent me like 700 pictures that she took and it all looks like they're from 1990. It's pretty cool. Beautiful. <laughs> Her phone is just that shitty. <laughs> <laughs> now we got to go to the park. I brought some, I brought some gifts and, uh, he, he enjoyed them. Yeah. yeah. And we, I got me going down the slide that I didn't I like you pretend like it was hard. What? No, it was. <laughs> that it really was that, that hard? Dude, the twist slide is fucking hard, bro. It is because it's, it's for like two year olds, two yeah. or three year olds. Like it's not like you, even me, I know where the joke's going. I'll, I'll beat you to it. I, <laughs> it was, it was difficult for even me to get down. Yeah. Well, you're also going backwards. I'm like, why is he going backwards? Because he made me. Owen kept saying backwards. Oh, oh, oh gotcha. he kept going backwards and calling me out. I was like, like you're making this harder for he's yourself. Like, he's like, dude, you're sense. a pussy. I'm going backwards. I was like, <laughs> he well. did say that. He called him a yeah, pussy. I agree. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. That's it was weird. weird. <laughs> you uh, raise an own right. Yeah, you got to. Um, no, that was great. I'm glad you came out, dude. It was it was cool. We actually got to come out that way soon. Um, yeah, sooner than later. Maybe very. I'm hoping soon. this month. Yeah, but. You told me a fun story that I don't know if you're willing to share about your golf. Well, not your golf outing, but someone's golf outing the day before. Oh, yes. I do want to share that. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> so happy you reminded me. So we were at a resort the day before. Really beautiful place uh, just outside of uh, Pittsburgh. Ben, now outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, what, what was it called? Nemecolon. Uh, Nemecolon. Beautiful yeah. place. 22-acre property. Three golf courses. It's a full resort thing. I had a really great day off there before I came to see uh, Brandon. Um, but I went to dinner like later on that night. I didn't go golfing uh, on that particular one. But Brian did. Uh, he went out with Matt, our friend Chris, and our security guard Travis. He was riding with Travis in the golf court. And I come to dinner. Uh, we were standing at the bar waiting for our table. And... Uh, Someone started talking about it, and they were like, oh, did you hear what happened? I was, I was like, no. Like, <laughs> Brian flipped a golf cart. And I was like, no. I was like, first of all, I was like, is he okay? And he was like, yeah, he's, he's okay. I was like, okay, now I can laugh. How the fuck did he flip a golf cart? And this is like a really nice place too, right? I'm like, oh, my God, I got to hear this. So apparently, like, him and Travis, one of them hit the ball off, you know, off the fairway. And there, and there's like a hill going down to it. And instead of, you know, like a normal person, you, you, you park the golf cart and you walk down the hill and they're like, Oh no, it's not that bad. We're going to go down the hill. Well, as they're going down the hill, they, he then realizes that it's way too steep after he's already started to go down it. And he hits like this little ridge and they, apparently they start to flip and our trap and Travis, our security guard, who's standing, sitting next to him. As he said it, he was like, we we're like, how did you react? He's like, well, it all seemed like super slow motion. So all I did was kind of brace myself and just the words of pure disappointment or the, the, the way I said it was a pure disappointment just went, Brian, and just felt like, <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just like, and just fucking, like a mom disappointed. And they, mom. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking flip. They trash this fucking thing. Their their clubs go everywhere. Matt's on the other side on the fairway with Chris, and he's just like, they just flipped the cart. Chris's like, no, they didn't flip the cart. He's like, no, I think they just flipped the cart. Because so they, they couldn't see. Like they, like, they disappeared. It was, that, it was that bad of a steep like like hill. Like Anyone else would have just been like, no, dude, either leave the ball or leave the cart and go down and hit it from down there. You walk <laughs> down it. And, he's, and it was so funny because... Yeah, they they pull Matt pulls up, and the, uh, the way he described it is like everything's just thrown about. Brian's literally laying on top of Travis because in their tumbling at some point they fell out of the cart, and he's laying on top of them, and like <laughs> they're all they're all jacked up. They luckily it was just like some soreness; no one got uh, really hurt or anything like that. But and then Brian's like re retelling the story at dinner and 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 at the bar while we're waiting for a table, and he's like, he's so I would have bet so much money that anyone else would have done this before me and i'm the first one of our friends to flip a golf cart and he's all i would have lost a little bit of respect for any one of you so i feel it, i deserve the same i was all, and I, as he's saying i'm like you're talking about me you thought i'd i'd, I'd, I'd tip a cart before he said absolutely <laughs> I was like, got you motherfucker you tipped a cart and i did it <laughs> oh that's awesome 
Yeah, it's it was so dude. funny. And then the, the, the best part, uh, or not, maybe not the best part, but one of the parts. Then they finish out all, <laughs> this is at like hole six. So they finish all 18, and then they, they're driving up to drop the cart off. <laughs> And they've had to like shift the thing, the roof back on and stuff. Oh. They're like, uh, and they gave this poor girl like a little extra money. And they're like, uh, we know we tipped it. I don't know. And they're like, she's like, I don't know what they're going to say about this, but I'll take your money. <laughs> 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 like she has anything to do with it. Like she's like, I'm just fucking grabbing the cart, guys. But in my head, I'm just like picturing like just this jacked up cart. And they're just like driving up nonchalantly. <laughs> like some straight out of a movie. Like, uh. Everything's okay here. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so good. Well, oh man. Good times though, man. Man, I mean, that was I mean, that's pretty much most of the tour. I mean, we ended up in uh Newark, New Jersey. Uh ended up being a great show. Uh we stayed in in New York City, got to go out to Tao. <laughs> you guys mm-hmm. are gonna love this. Uh where I had previously fallen in the Koi Pond. Oh, that? Uh, oh, Chris, wow. Chris Santos' did they you? restaurant. Uh, no, they didn't, luckily. Uh, but I did I did ask Chris, of course, uh, a couple nights before, like the night before I texted Chris. I was like, hey, any way you can get us a table. Of course, he was very, very generous and got us a table. Chef hooked up an amazing meal. We didn't, uh, you know, we didn't have to look at our menu at all. As you guys know, we just they just kept bringing us stuff. Uh, incredible night. Um, uh, Sullivan King and his wife was out with us as well. So we had an incredible dinner that night. We were sitting right next to said koi pond again. And, uh, of course, there was many jokes thrown in my direction uh, about it. <laughs> For any of you who don't know, there's a Madison Square Garden recap episode from last year uh, where I divulged uh, uh, one, one, of the, one of the many reasons why I decided to stop drinking. As you guys know at the top of this episode. <laughs> That's on the cons of the pros and cons list, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably, probably won't be falling in, in, in koi ponds anymore. I can't guarantee it, but pro- the chances are a little bit better that I won't be. But yeah, it was pretty funny because it was like, you know, back to the scene. of the More crime. likely that Lacey will fall next time. <laughs> yes. Oh, sh- yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. She would have fallen in too. She's dead sober. She's clumsy as shit. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, that was really fun. And then, you know, really capped it off with a great show. Um, the, the, Jer- the New Jersey came out, man. It was a great last show. Good way to end it. And then, as I said, just got home last night. Been home and loving chatting with you guys. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. This, this is fun. To see you, man. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I'm tired. Yeah, yeah I could tell. You're like, <laughs> you're, you're a bundle of fucking energy over there, dude. <laughs> you do. <laughs> The koi the pond thing there. really caught me off because I forgot about that. And that, man, that was so fucking good. Because I just remember like the original thumbnail we made for that episode. And you said, absolutely not. Or you did it anyway. No, no. We, we, we changed it a little bit. What was, what was I don't, it ended up being uh, Michael Scott in the fucking yeah. koi pond, right? Yeah, yeah. But it, I thought there was an original okay. one we made where it was you and you just were very, you did not want. <laughs> I didn't want that to live in infamy for my son to see. <laughs> Oh, in Knoxville, uh, back to no- uh, a couple days before that, Knoxville, I had a, a chat with uh, Corey Glover of uh, 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 Living Color oh, and yeah. uh, his new project. He's got a new band out. I saw. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Sonic Universe, I believe. Yes. Um, new, new band. I, I got the advanced copy of the record, reached out to Tim um, and got Corey on the show. We had a great chat. Um, talked a little bit about MSG as well. That's why I bring it up again because they were on that show with us. And uh, yeah, I just had a great chat about his new record, you know, and everything in between. We went back to how it all started. I didn't realize he was uh, an actor before Living Color. He was in the movie Platoon. Did you guys know that? Yeah. He had done a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, spots on commercials and things like that and smaller movies. But his big his big movie that he was a part of was Platoon. Uh, before Living Color went off and 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 took off, and and he also shared a story of how Mick Jagger was a big part of getting uh, of of breaking uh, Living Color. So we look forward to that episode coming out in a few weeks as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's that's the long and the short of the tour there, guys, and and seeing you guys and oh, uh, Sam, you asked you you had, you said you had some questions about when I saw Darby the other night. Oh yeah, where was that? 
Uh, we were in, what city was that? That's a great fucking question. Oh, uh, Knoxville, actually, yeah. So there was, yeah, that same day. Um, uh, Darby had just gotten back the night before from San Diego where he got his surgery on his foot um, after, after, he, after he broke his ankle. Um, How did he break his ankle? I saw that. Maybe it was, a, it was a, 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 a match with Jay White. Um, and why, um, and it, the way he described it to me, and I was like, man, how do you do that? Cause like he does so much crazy stunts and stuff. Right. And rare, I mean, minor, minor injuries for the most part, not, not like surgery needed injuries and stuff. And it was just like a regular routine move of him coming off the turnbuckle and he, and the way he landed and it caused this, this break that, uh, required surgery. And the real bummer for him was that, uh, he, Stopped him from going to um, Everest. Everest. Not Everest. Yeah. So he's gonna. He's like, ah, eh, it's a bummer, but it'll still be there next year. So he is planning on making up, making it up next year. Um, but yeah, he was definitely bummed out. He was right. He came up to the show, and like I said, he had just gotten in from San Diego, and then he made the four-hour drive from his his house just out of out just outside of Atlanta to Knoxville. And I was like, why are you making this long of a drive? And then I found out why afterwards, because of this trivia game he wanted me to play. <laughs> and uh after so many times with? of not playing i like i had to like finally play one of his games for for penalties because every as you guys know every other time i'm like i will host it but i am not getting involved in any of the pain or or suffering um so i finally i, I finally manned up as they say and uh yeah he was out he was out with zach his brother um and sarah uh Who filmed? And, uh zach did i believe um, yeah, he had a little crew there and he's like, so I can't bring it in. You're going to have to walk out with uh, Zach and go grab this box of goodies that I have for this trivia game. I was like, Oh God, what do we got in store here now? So he comes, they bring in a dog collar, a shocking dog collar. Nice. And, uh, I had to put this on, uh, the video's out on Darby's Instagram. If anybody hasn't seen it yet. And, uh, he, had, it was like a saw thing. So he had like, he put in these words to like, I, I guess you could probably find it online somewhere. Where you, you, you write the script and, and, and the jigsaw voice like says it and he has like this whole thing, you know, finding out if I'm a jobber for Avenged Sevenfold. Um, and so it's a bunch of Avenged questions basically that I should know. And uh, if I got three wrong, I was going to have to get a tattoo. But each time I get one wrong, uh, I get shocked on, on the fucking neck with this dog collar. And at first I was like, all right, all right, but you got to turn it down. He's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't turn it down, fucking asshole. Um, <laughs> eventually, I found out later it was supposed to be at like twenty five. He turned it up to ninety on me. Um, nice, yeah. So I got the 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 real one that irks me that I got wrong was a lyric from a song. It was "Jealousy is an ugly word, but you don't seem to care." And uh, uh, under the gun, there's a group around. It's Brandon Seller from Atreus out there. Matt's out here, like. He just introduced himself to, to Darby and he knows all the fucking lyrics. And, uh, and I'm like, and I know the lyrics too. I know what song it is now. I knew the song immediately afterward, but in the moment I couldn't think of what fucking song it was. So I said the wrong one. That was the first time I got tased and I was like, Oh, it fucking hurt a little bit. Like, I'm not going to lie. I was like, dude, people doing this to their dogs kind of sucks, dude. <laughs> like, right? the dogs are so much smaller. Yeah. yeah. Well, not that much more. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was so do you guys neither one of you know what song that is, right? No. It's the first lyric in Burn It Down from Our City of Evil. And we haven't we haven't played that song. I haven't listened to that song in so fucking long. I didn't think about it. But it like came up as like, oh my God, it's literally the first line of the fucking song. And I felt so stupid for not getting it right. And the other one I, I didn't feel bad. The lollipop right. I couldn't oh, I believe that, that you got the lollipop. I was like, oh, that one he won't get. Nailed that one. Nailed. I, and I got uh, Jimmy with his uh, fly swatter being pink. I got some of the harder ones. That's why I felt yeah. so stupid about it. I was like, that one I should have fucking nailed. The one that I didn't feel so bad about was it, what, what the color of the coffin was in, Se in Seize the Day that, uh, that Sin was playing the solo on. I had a 50-50 shot. I knew, it, I knew it was black or white, but I, I went with, I, w I think I went with black and it was, yeah, I went with black and it was white. And I was like, ah whatever I should have known, but who, yeah. made, who 
did they tell you who made the things? It was funny because the questions were kind of themed. It made me think about when we were watching Friends, when you're like, dude, I'm going to get every single one. And then it's like, who was the name of this person? And you're like, well, I don't know the name of that person, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. I was like, those are very specific questions. I was surprised you did as well as you did. Um, well, I, I think Darby made the questions and he, I mean, he used the internet to help him, he, he, but yeah, I texted him a picture. Uh, our kids, your kid and my kid were at a birthday party and they had a face painter and I, I Sawyer, my son walks up and his face is painted like Darby. I was like, Oh, that's cool. And so I texted Darby and he said, looks great. We did trivia with Johnny the other night and he got shocked with the collar pretty good. And I put, that's <laughs> awesome. He never takes penalties. Uh, <laughs> That's great. You got him to take it. And he said, we filmed it, uh, making, making an edit. So I was like, oh, I can't wait yeah. to see it. Yeah. And it's up for everyone to see your boy, Johnny Christ getting shocked with a dog collar. It's real. And it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, well, I think that's fun, enough. It, you guys got anything else you, you wanted to talk about tonight? And we already talked I about got your one sperm. other thing, but it's, it's a downer. So I'll save it for, for another day. Yeah, well, let's not end this on yeah. a downer. Yeah, let's we'll not end that. this on a downer. Let's we'll not do that. that. We we had enough downers with you on the on the episode anyway, so it's not let's not. Keep... <laughs> I'll just take my rat teeth and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks again. I hope everyone enjoyed WrestleMania weekend. I know that that's coming up. We're recording before it, as I said. I know I'll be watching it. Fucking very close. I'm a little bummed. My son wanted me to take him out to Philly to see it. And I was just like, dude, I'm just getting home from tour from that. I don't want to go back, but I will be watching it. I'm so excited with everything they got going on um, in the both main events. I mean, and there's so much, so many other great storylines happening too, of course. But I think every, I think if we're all being honest, we're, that's, that's the shit we're most excited for is the two main events of both nights. So really hey, excited wait, to see what comes out with speaking that. Speaking of WrestleMania, what happened with The Rock recently? Did someone shut him down? Did you guys read that in the news? Where he was cutting a promo and someone shut him down and apparently had a little outburst? Oh, no, no, no. It was, it was last week on Raw. Again, Sham is... What happened? Is, uh, so, it, it, it's, it's all... <laughs> you got to watch wrestling, Sam. All right, yeah, never I know. mind. It's, it's so good. No, no, what, what it is is it, it's so good because it, what Sam's alluding or, or reading and buying into is exactly what the selling point of the promo is. Oh, so it's, it's all so it's the end. It's the end of the episode and it stops, but the, you know, it goes off air. This is classic old live wrestling stuff, live TV wrestling. So then he uh, took, he takes to social media to fuel that fire even further and the bring selling. in the, the, the cell of it. And they did keep going. And I'm sure that that, 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 that footage is, is released on social media and other places. But the idea that it pissed him off that they stopped the camera as if he had no idea. It's like, that's, that's, it's brilliant. I loved, and I loved that. They're fighting out in the rain. He's out, outside in the rain. He's beating the crap out of, out of Cody, slamming it against his own bus, calling out Mama Rhodes with his belt, putting blood all over it. It was sick. And then like, they had these, this was another thing I was listening to Eric Bischoff on 83 Weeks and Conrad Thompson talk about it a couple of days ago. When they had like the, I don't know if you saw Brandon, they had the semis out there and they were yeah. well lit with like John yeah. Cena and the undertaker or, or John no, Cena and, and Austin and Austin. Yeah. So all the wrestling community is fucking talking about which one of them showing up during one of the main events to do something. Dude, it's going to, it's, here's my theory and I haven't been watching, but I've been paying attention. Right. And I think it makes perfect sense for both of them to come, even the odds against the bloodline, because Rock has history with all of them. Like you look at like the passing of the torch, right? It was Rock and Austin. Then it right. was Rock and Cena. And now it's Rock and Cody. And I think coming out of this, you get a cool feud where it's Rock and Cody leading into maybe SummerSlam or some shit. But like storytelling is fucking awesome. And I love it. It's so good right now. And they're they're ramping up for this Netflix deal that comes in yeah. and when they move to Netflix in nine months that they already got through. I mean, it's uh, I've been saying it for a few years now. It is such a great time to be a wrestling fan. If if it you is. haven't been in a while again and you're listening to this, you're like, I watched wrestling back in the day, but I don't really like that shit anymore. I promise you, Dude. you start watching what what the, what's going on in these in all these organizations. It's it's fucking good shit right now. It's it's a good time to be a wrestling fan. And I also love that Brandon just gave his uh his predictions for something that everyone's going to hear whether he was right or wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. I think we did that last year too. And I was like, fuck, and I was totally wrong. 
<laughs> I think we. I what think do you think is happening in the locker room, guys? Yeah, and Sam. Sam definitely wants to know what's going on in the locker room with all the guys. Not, 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 not just it. the guys. I just look at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna end it on that note. Uh, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Leave the comments and uh, email Sam the Hawk Hawkins at uh, Sam at drinkswithjohnny.com oh, if you're from beautiful. Des Moines. Uh, <laughs> leave a comment about this episode if you if you care to. Let us know about the movies and the stupid conversation we just had. What do you think about wrestling and all the shows? If you came out to any of the events, then full shows on the last thing. I appreciate you. Let us know how you felt about the lineup, what you felt about the show, what you felt about the set, all those wonderful things. And uh, love you guys. Thanks again. Until next time, as always, cheers.